and welcome to day 14 of the Christmas Craft Countdown, where I'm sharing a brand new Cricut Craft project every day for 20 days. If you've got any scraps of card hanging about that you've been saving for that one special project, you just don't know what that's going to be yet, today's Christmas Craft Countdown project is for you. I'll show you how to make this beautiful Christmas tree card with loads of different little butterfly shapes, all cut from your scraps of cardstock. The SVG is free to download for the next 24 hours, so let's see how to get it. If you haven't already registered your free ticket for the Christmas Craft Countdown, go to craftwithsarah.com forward slash CCC to do so. Once registered, check for an email from me with the subject line Christmas Craft Countdown ticket information or any of the other emails from me that you've been sent throughout this countdown. Can't find them? Check your junk or spam box to see if they've gone there by mistake. These emails contain the link to view the countdown projects and download today's files. Scroll down the page to find today's project. Click the button to start the files automatically downloading to your computer or mobile device. Each download is only available for free for 24 hours after it goes live. If you have missed some, check out the Instant Access Bundle at craftwithsarah.com forward slash CCC bundle, which gives immediate and ongoing access to all of the files from the Christmas Craft Countdown. All downloads come in zip folders. You need to unzip them before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the folder, open up Cricut Design Space and start a new project. Go into Upload over on the left and then Upload Image. You can then either click Browse to find the file on your computer or drag and drop it in. The file to choose is the one which starts SVG in the file name. So I click and drag that in and then it will look like this. Go ahead and press Upload and then when it's in your recent uploads, click on it to get the green border and then press Add to Canvas. There are a few things about this design that I'd like to make you aware of before we start cutting it out. The first is that you've got these butterflies on the left hand side and these are spares. We'll be cutting these out just in case we need a few extra to fill in the gaps on the Christmas tree when we're sticking it together. The next part to make you aware of is this grey layer. You don't have to cut this if you want to, but it's used as a stencil so that we know where to stick the butterflies. To show you what I mean, I'll click the design and press ungroup over on the top right and find that grey layer. It's right near the bottom. I'll just move it over to one side. So this white rectangle is actually what we'll be gluing all the butterflies onto. But this one I'll use as a stencil guide just to place on top when I'm sticking them to make sure I follow that triangle shape. If you're confident you could make the shape without it, then you can leave that layer off by clicking the eye next to it in the layers panel. However, I know I'm not very good at sticking things by eye, so I will definitely be cutting it. If you want to add a score line to the base card to make it easier to fold, then you can do that and here's how. I'll click it in my layers panel and just use my arrows on my keyboard to move it underneath to make this bit easier to see. Go into shapes and choose a score line. Set it to the height of the card, which is seven inches. And then with the score line selected, press shift on the keyboard and choose the red base card. And now both of those layers are selected. Go into align and center to put it in the middle. That is not the center. Did I press the wrong thing? I must have pressed the wrong thing. Okay, now that's in the middle. And then with those layers both still selected, click attach down the bottom of the layers panel. That's what actually tells the Cricut where to do the score line. So the attaching is important. If you want to, you can put this back into position. You'll probably find that it's appearing on top of the card now. So to fix that with the red card selected, go into arrange, center back, and then it will appear underneath. So you can put it back into that position if you want to. There's nothing else we need to change. So I'm gonna go ahead and click make it and then show you how to sort out all of your scraps of cardstock to um, get these looking how we want them to. 
I'm not cutting mine from these weird colors. I'm going to be doing it from five shades of green, but I thought it was easier on screen if they're all quite different, just to make it really obvious which ones you're using at which point. Here are all of my layers separated out and I can now think about what I want to cut them out from and have a look at my scraps. For this one, I'm going to make it a four and I'm going to rotate it by pressing shift as I rotate so it goes exactly 90 degrees. For the stencil layer, it's up to you what you cut this from. Remember, this won't be part of the finished card, but I'm going to just click the three little dots and move object and cut them from my same piece of white as that first rectangle, just so that I use up more of that sheet and I don't need to go into a different color. For the butterflies, we will be looking at our scraps of card first to determine how to position these. So when I said I have a lot of scrap card, I wasn't kidding. These two folders are just full of green. So what I need to do is find five different shades of green in here. And if I've only got little bits, then I might need to kind of try and find a couple of bits of that same color. So you can do that. You don't need to find just one big bit. It can be lots of little bits that we'll put together. I'm going to pause this to have a dig through, otherwise you'll probably be watching me for about half an hour trying to decide on all the colours. I've selected my five different shades of green and as you can see I've got a variety of different size pieces of card. Now things like this that I have saved and you would come in one day but it's not very helpful for most of my craft projects as there's hardly any card left and it's really thin. However, for these butterflies, it's gonna work perfectly. And the same for this one, which is a very similar shape. And then this one, it's actually three different pieces but it is all the same bit of green. It's the same um, brand of cardstock, the same shade. So I'm gonna use these together for one of the colors of the butterfly. We need to tell Design Space where to cut the butterflies so that they're going to fit on our scraps. We'll do this one color at a time for all of the different butterflies. Get your Cricut mat and leave the protective cover on it for now. And then take your first color. And my first one's actually gonna be the easiest. Um, I'll start with the darker one. And I'm not actually sticking this, I'm just lining it up against that line there. And then I can compare it on my screen and design space to see where the butterflies will go. So for my dark piece of green, I'm going to do the blue butterflies from them. Let's change it to A4 just because that's the color card, I've, the kind of card I've got. And I could leave it like this because I do have all of that space at the top of my card. However, as I'm trying to use up as many of my scraps as possible, I'm actually just going to move the butterflies down the left side instead because I've got that really long thin bit of the card which I can then use up with all of those butterflies and it means I'll then have the top bit to use on a different project another day which will be more helpful to me because it's a larger bit than this strip down the side. Make sure when you're moving the butterflies that none of them overlap otherwise they won't cut out properly. I just realized on second inspection that these butterflies down the edge were actually going out further than I had available on the card so I'm just rotating them round so that they take up less space. Um, so before I had them like that and it was just going out a little bit further than I had available on the card. By rotating them it means they're not going to come out as far and I'll be able to get all of these cut out from that little bit of additional card down the side of my piece. My butterflies were all cut from down this bit here, which means that they'll then have all of that bit that I can use on another project another time. So I'm making the most of this tiny little space of remaining cardstock here by making sure those butterflies will cut from that. From now on, there are two different ways that you can make this card. You can either do exactly that same thing where you line them up on your mat like this and just manually change it in design space based on each bit of card 
Or if you'd prefer to get this cut out first and then go back and do the others first, you can click continue with your Cricut machine and just cut out this one color and then cancel the cut to go back to the screen where you can change all the paper sizes and then do the next shade of green. Get that one cut out, cancel the cut, do the next one, etc. So whichever way you want to do it is absolutely fine. I think what I'll do is I'll do all of the fiddling around in design space first and then I will um, go and cut everything out together. One thing I will show you first just before I finish is um, what to do if there are lots of little pieces like this. It gets a bit harder to do it all at once because it means you've got to remember where everything is going on the mat so that when you get to this color, you know where to put it. So on this one, it might make sense to um, just do this one color and then cancel the cut to do the others. But what you can also do instead is once you've lined it up, if you use the corners as a guide, I'm trying to make it so that I've got something in each corner. That one's a bit harder because there's no straight line on it. To make it so that you can remember your exact positioning when you get to cut this one, you can get a bit of washi tape and just stick them together like that. And the top ones. Like that. So then I would know when I come back to putting this on my mat, when I'm cutting it out, that I can just line up those corners and everything's going to be the right way around because of the tape, it's got it kept in position. So I would just stick those down there, it's exactly the same. Then I could take the tape off and know that it's going to cut exactly perfectly. Here's how my page looks for that green with the multiple pieces. I kept it at 12 by 12 inches so that I can get my butterflies exactly where they are on my green. And it turns out I actually didn't need the circular bit of green down the bottom as there was enough space on the top two pieces that um, I could fit all of those butterflies on. Here's the bit with my multiple pieces of green and I thought I'd just show you how this looks when it comes off the mat. So I'm going to turn my mat upside down and gently bend backwards so that the cardstock doesn't bend or wrinkle or that bend goes into the mat instead of the cardstock. There we go. Then I've got some of my butterflies left on there and some of them are in here. They have not quite come out so I can just pop them through and then on my other piece here again these haven't quite cut through I should have chosen a um, higher card setting I think but they have cut they're <laughs> just not quite coming out they are very small there and then let's get these ones off. You can use the um, Cricut spatula tool to get underneath them, just make sure you don't bend them. And there's all my teeny tiny butterflies done. And you can see just how perfectly that used up my scraps of cardstock. In fact, I could even just tear that bit off of there and put this back into my stash for another day. I've now got everything cut out from cardstock. You can see my little piles of butterflies here. But I just wanted to show how wonderfully um, this has used up all of those scraps. So I've managed to use that bit of card that wouldn't be any good for anything else. And on all of them, you can see just how wonderfully these butterflies have used up these pieces. And on some of them, I will be able to snip the butterflies off and still have some cardstock to use another day. 
So now I'll put these over to one side and bring the card in. I've cut my base card from this scrapbook paper and I've got my gold backing piece, my rectangle and the little triangle cut out. And I will zoom in a bit so that you can actually see the little butterflies. I've also printed out a copy of the Christmas tree and I'll include one of these in your download folder so that you can print it too if you want to try and put the butterflies in exactly the same place but of course you don't have to they can go wherever you want them to go. I'll start with my little white piece here and then I will Use a bit of washi tape to stick this to my surface because I don't want it to move. <laughs> I can't find the end of my tape. Looks like it ought to be there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, I hate it when that happens. All right, so just a little bit. I don't want to overlap the card too much, but it shouldn't rip. Washi tape is generally pretty good at coming off cleanly. And now I'm going to stick my stencil on top because I am using that stencil piece. Um, and by stick on top, I actually just mean use another bit of washi tape. So I've placed it on top of that original rectangle. And now I'm just going to stick this one with some washi tape so that it doesn't move about. You only need a little bit. And one there. And now I can start gluing on my butterflies. Here's my templates that I can try and guide it up, but I'm not gonna worry too much. The glue I'm using is called Kalal. I like it because it's really good for paper crafts. It doesn't bleed through the paper and it dries quickly, which is gonna be great for layering up all these butterflies. And I've put it into these needle tip applicator bottles from Amazon, so it'll be even easier to stick. If you want to, you could use 3D foam squares for some of the butterflies to give them a bit of dimension too. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that yet or not. I'll start with my biggest butterflies, which is these dark green ones. I think it's easier to start with the bigger butterflies because then the smaller ones can go on top. Whereas if you did the big ones last, then they might cover up some of your small ones and you won't be able to see them anymore. So I'm just going to use the printout as a rough guide, put some little blobs of glue. Of course you could uh, just glue the bottom of the butterflies instead, which would probably make more sense. Some of them I'm tucking under that stencil a little bit. Remember, we don't need it to be an actual perfect triangle. So if some of it goes outside the edge, that's absolutely fine. We're just using it as a general guide. So a bit more glue on these ones. Just really roughly following what's on that printout. And we've got more butterflies cut than what's on the printout because um, we had those extras. So these are my extra three. I'm going to leave them for now and move on to the next color, which is, I think, this one. I'm going to do these as the red ones. That's the right shape. So you can match the shapes up. And these will just glue straight on top. My original butterflies are moving about a bit. I probably should have waited for the glue on those to dry a little bit more, but it's fine. That's those ones from the template. Now the next ones, which is this green. And this one will be easier for me to work out because I'm going to use the green on the template. And again, I will glue these ones. I think for some of the little, little ones, I might end up using a little bit of foam to make them pop out, but we'll see a little bit near the time. That's three of my colors done. So now it's my tiny butterflies to go. I've got some little foam squares which should fit underneath them nicely. So I'll try and give them a bit of dimension. 
Actually, they're just too big. I'll cut them in half. <laughs> These are very, very small now. <laughs> this is going to be a test of my uh, dexterity. As I said, the foam squares are optional, but I thought it would just be nice to have a little pop out of dimension for these last few butterflies. It probably would have made more sense to do it on maybe the third one, which are a little bit bigger, but never mind. I like a challenge. <laughs> I'm not really following the guide anymore. I'm just trying to fill in some of the white with the green butterflies. Might start with the other ones too, so I don't add too many of the pale ones. I love how all these greens are working together. Even though it is butterfly shapes, it looks almost like the leaves on a Christmas tree which was what I was going for, so <laughs> that is a success. I've got a nice big gap there that I could maybe put a bigger butterfly on with some foam. Let's go for another big one. I'm being rebellious now. <laughs> I'm now almost there, but I want to check the edge. So I'll carefully peel that template off. Oh, that looks Christmas tree like. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it just needs a few extras, I think, to really get it looking like a tree, including one tiny butterfly at the top to make that point. Right, I think I'm done with my butterflies. There's a few left over, but that's okay. I did end up using quite a lot of those spares though, so I'm glad that they were cut out. And then the last thing to do whilst this is all nicely stuck in position is to add the base of the tree, which is these three pieces. We'll start with the, um, the trunk. My card didn't cut very well on this one. It's a bit furry on the edges. And I'll add some dimension with some foam squares. And just stick that underneath the tree. Maybe I'll go a little bit higher. No, I like it because the distance is the same at the top and the bottom. The next is the red gift to go on top, which will be glued on. And then the ribbon on top, which again, I'll glue. They're super cute. I love it. <laughs> Carefully peel off the washi tape. And I'm actually going to take a little break now until that glue is completely dry because I don't want to smudge anything around for the next step. My glue is now all dry, so let's get the rest of the carpet together. When I was waiting for that glue to dry, I realized that the paper I'd used for my card would mean that I wouldn't actually be able to write on the inside. So I've made a duplicate cut of my gold rectangle and the white rectangle on top. And I'll stick that inside so that I can actually write a message in this card. So uh, I'm actually gonna do that first. Um, and I'm going to use double-sided tape for the inside so that I don't need to wait for that to dry again. Put this on my gold. This will also help strengthen my card a bit. Because I've used scrapbook paper, it's not the thickest 
so adding a couple of extra layers on the inside will make it sturdier when it's stood up. And I'm really bad at sticking things straight. Luckily, a nice pattern like this <laughs> makes it a little bit more forgiving. I think that's straight-ish. <laughs> There's the inside and now the outside. I need to stick my tree to the gold on the front and this time I use glue because I want to be able to wiggle it about a bit in case it isn't straight. I don't mind so much on the inside but I want the outside to look great. I've put a lot of glue on there because I want it to uh, stay really well stuck. <laughs> I actually got that pretty straight. I'm impressed. Okay, I'm going to leave that to dry and then I'll use my 3D foam squares to put this on the front of the card just for an extra little bit of pop and dimension. This is all dry now so I'll add the foam. I should have mentioned earlier these foam squares are a bit different to the ones I normally use. These ones are only one millimeter thick whereas the normal ones I use are two which means they're great for card making because they add a little bit of dimension but they don't make it so thick that the card would be really expensive to post. So that is a nice option but because they're thin they're probably only about the thickness of two sheets of card, one on top of the other. They're a little bit trickier to use, <laughs> especially because they're so small. And it's quite easy to sort of fold them under themselves and get them stuck together. I'm using quite a lot because my card is heavy with the gold mirror card stock and all the bits of butterfly. As well as putting the foam around the edge, you also want to put it in the middle to give it stability all the way down. Otherwise it will bend downwards if there's nothing in the middle and it won't look as good. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to peeling all the tops off of these. Well, let's give that a go now. There's all my foam and then peel the tops off to get that stickiness showing. Now this just needs to go in the middle of my card front, card front. <laughs> Once again, I will try my very hardest to stick it on straight. I think that's okay. Not quite there. That's better. Push down to get all those foam squares stuck. And then here is my really cute butterfly Christmas tree card made from all of my scraps of green cardstock. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to use up your craft scraps to make this beautiful Christmas tree greetings card. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more Cricut crafts and greetings card tutorials. I hope to see you again tomorrow for day 15 of the Christmas Craft Countdown. Thank you for watching. Bye.